At first, the humans were an interesting oddity. As they were one of the few predator species to reach sentience. We of course took a particular interest in these new hunters. And unlike the Daza, they were not insectoids. Unlike us Tons, they lacked the cohesion of group thought and a single pack conscience. Translator note. Daza and Tons, the only two predator species to be currently granted galactic compliance status. A jump-started race, likely only saved from their own extermination, by the cosmic luck of being discovered by the inquisitive redives. As a primate species, they had barely learned the basic tenets of the universe. Their scientific knowledge being pushed aside for war, religion, and other distractions. They entered the galactic stage with all of the hubris of a species that rose to sentience alone on its own planet. Initially, they only meshed well with their redied benefactors. And some theorized that was only because the redied seemed reminiscent of human dogs. Man's best friend, they claimed. They offered very little in the form of new technologies. Their communication systems were inefficient. Their wars were still fought with kinetic weapons. And even their best scientists had barely managed to theorize microparticles. But, they were curious little creatures. Most species, when given trial access to the galactic net, remained silent in all but the most critical matters. Seeking to make no mistakes, before their application to the compliance species list was accepted. Humans leaped onto the net with no such qualms. To judge from their posts, each individual seemed to be as reckless as a Daza without a queen. They filled the network with useless articles, fiction, irrelevant drivel, and incorrect but fiercely defended opinions. The humans aware of their precarious position in the galactic arena, argued that these posts were the product of a vocal minority. A strange concept to us, before we had met their race. Regardless, it seemed the true minority were the ones, using the net to learn. And learn they did. They may have been jump-started, but within decades, humans had not only learned the science behind faster-than-light travel, but managed to produce their own microfusion engines, capable of jumps, accurate to two light years. They created a functioning galactic net relay of their own without instruction, and had begun terraforming of their nearest star system. Nothing groundbreaking, but impressive for a new species. They did not simply follow in the galactic's footsteps either. Their NASA scientists presented a hybrid microfusion engine schematic, combining Flasite Subverter and Chera Quantum Black Hole technology. They were dismissed of Relay for presenting such nonsense. Translator note, Relay. Hub of Galactic Civilization, Trade and Science. Only established galactic species may reside. Unestablished species may apply for acceptance. Present notable scientific advancements to the Galactic Council. The human race's exoplanet flagship, the Mayflower, was finished four years later, housing an impressive 2.5 billion lives. Rather than most stationary exoplanets however, it came equipped with four of these flassy Chera engines. No species has ever been able to recreate them. The only known attempts have resulted in catastrophic failure, destroying entire systems. Humans have kept the original schematics a well-guarded secret since discovering, even the files were scrubbed when they were dismissed from Relay. Besides small and unguided redied scouter beacons, the Mayflower remains the only vessel ever created capable of wormhole travel. But the ability to travel such to any species' home planet or colonized worlds, humans became exceptionally well-known traders. For the first time in galactic history, a species' currency was considered compliant before the actual species did. But more than their trading, humans had a special ability for innovation. Nearly every home planet visited was given a myriad of creations by the prolific engineers of the human race. Work smarter, not harder, they said. Give a lazy man a difficult job, and he will find an easy way to do it. Their philosophies seemed counterproductive. But it worked. 
wherever they went, quality of life and efficiency were improved. Humans, incredibly creative, were even capable of producing music, tailored to each species they encountered. They gave us tones, beautiful symphonies, by recording and synthesizing the soothing calls of our den mothers. But there were issues. Every planet they visited reported human aggression. Several non-regulated human fleets warred and pirated, in the name of their gods, or their greed, or their primate predator instinct. Their FG engines, initially an insult to Relay, became an insult of another type, when humans refused to share their technology. In the end, after the century required for deliberation, humans were not deemed galactic compliant. They would be allowed to continue travel and trade, but given restricted access to the galactic network. They were not permitted to colonize any habitable worlds in the inner ring, or to reside or present in Relay. They were told they could restart the application process in a century, an insult to them with their short lifespans. Nevertheless, the humans carried on. They grew a particularly close relationship with their first contact, the Redides. They grew substantial colonies on Redide home planets, and through their licenses, formed metropoli within the inner ring that went mostly ignored by the Galactic Council. But given reduced status, many of their species became frustrated. Several reputable fleets turned to criminal pursuits. It seemed that for every ship in violation that was put down, a dozen sprung up, either in revenge, or in opportunity. Tensions escalated. The Council banned trade with humanity, and demanded withdrawal of all inner ring human colonies. Still, they hesitated to threaten war. Humanity had become wealthy in both trade and knowledge, capable of amassing a powerful opposition. And the Council did not wish to isolate their allies, the Redides, responsible for location of an astounding 42% of galactic compliance species, with their life scout beacons. Of course, the government aboard the Mayflower, denounced the actions of their rogue species mates at every turn. Nonetheless, on GUR 14201, translator note. Galactic Universal Rotation, the standard galactic time frame. Human reference. 2174 AC. A fleet led by the human, Black Dawn pirates, launched a failed attack upon Relay. Despite the victory, the Galactic Council denounced humanity as a galactic threat, and organized their military species. We were deployed immediately. As a coordinated hive mind predator species, us Tons are both the bulk of the galactic force and our Dan Mothers the core of the leadership. The timid races of the Council cannot match our ferocity, and the Daza are too wild to manage space engagement due to their bloodlust. However, they do make useful ground troops for reclaiming habitable worlds for repurposing. Our Dan Mothers gave us leave to release them upon Earth, to great effect, human casualties were innumerable. Once reclaimed, our den mother set us tons a course to the second most densely populated human colony, seeking extermination, or perhaps a primal defensive response from the Mayflower itself. Instead, we arrived to find a planet almost entirely devoid of sentient life. An interrogation of a small sect of devout humans remaining, revealed that a second exoplanet flagship had been created, large enough to host more than 16 times the entire human population, and nearly a quarter the size of Relay. The reasoning behind such a wasteful and massive structure was lost to us, until we communicated with the Galactic Council. The human's Mayflower had appeared in the inner ring, but jumped out as soon as it was within weapons range of Galactic forces. It had been a distraction. The second ship, unknown and unnoticed, had jumped first to the redyed homeworld, then to several other colonized redyed and human worlds. In total, an estimated 27 billion redyeds had chosen to live alongside the humans in exile, two thirds of their species. A foolish decision by all standards. The humans were powerful, but not powerful enough to withstand us taunts. 
Still, a structure of such size could hold nearly 200 billion more humans or redides without pause. The humans must be planning to hide in the outer ring, for many GUR. The Mayflower and its larger successor have since been missing. But our den mothers have found a lead, a small human cargo vessel, on the edge of the inner ring, and near our home planet. Upon inspection, no live humans were found upon the ship. And our den mothers have boarded to search the databases personally, and find the location of the humans. They opened a comm link with the Mayflower, and are attempting to triangulate its location. We can feel their excitement, and they believe they have. The humans have created a beautiful new symphony. It plays through the comm link. It chants to kill. Our den mothers are screaming at us, but their voices don't sound half as beautiful. Their voices are forever silenced. The song tells us the coordinates to the Mayflower and the new ship, the Retribution. It tells us Ton soldiers to join them for war preparations against the Galactic Council. We come gladly. All 183 billion of us. Author's name and the link to original text is in the description. Consider tapping the thumbs up and pressing the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video.